The Great Biological Betrayal There is a specific lie that destroys more marathon dreams than any other factor. It is the belief that if you can breathe, you can run. We have all seen it. Maybe you have lived it. You are at kilometer 32 of the marathon. You look at your Garmin, your heart rate is stable. Your breathing is controlled. Metabolically, you feel like you could run forever. Your engine is purring. But structurally, you are falling apart. Your quads feel like they are being stabbed with knives. Your calves are vibrating uncontrollably. Every step sends a shockwave of pain up your spine that makes you want to vomit. And despite having a good engine, the car simply stops moving. Why? Because for the amateur runner targeting a 3.30 or 4-hour marathon, aerobic fitness is cheap. Muscular durability is expensive. You spent 16 weeks building a Ferrari engine, but you put it inside a plastic chassis. And when the chassis breaks at kilometer 32, many of you do something desperate. You reach into your pocket and swallow a painkiller. In this video, I am going to explain the structural gap, why your heart gets fit months before your legs do. I will explain the Z-line rupture, what actually happens inside your muscles when you hit the wall. I will expose why taking painkillers is a dangerous game of Russian roulette, and I will reveal the 44.5 kilometer rule, the hidden distance you are actually training for, but nobody told you about. Part 1, the timeline of adaptation red tissue versus white tissue. To understand why you fail, we need to look at biology's timeline. The human body adapts to stress, but not all tissues are created equal. We have two types of tissue, red tissue and white tissue. Red tissue, the engine. This is your heart, your lungs, and your capillary network. It is red because it is flooded with blood. Because it has massive blood supply, it adapts incredibly fast. Within eight to 10 weeks of consistent training, your blood volume increases, your stroke volume improves, and your mitochondria density skyrockets. You can transform your cardio in two months. It feels easy, it feels seductive. White tissue, the chassis. This is your tendons, your ligaments, your fascia, and your bones. It is white because it has very poor blood supply, a vascular. Because it lacks blood flow, nutrients take a long time to get there. To remodel collagen and strengthen bone density to withstand 42,000 impacts, it takes six to 12 months or more. Here is the trap. At week 12 of your plan, your heart says, I am ready, let's run fast. But your tendons scream, we are not ready yet. Because your heart feels good, you listen to the heart. You push the pace. You override the structural warnings, and that is why you fail at kilometer 32. That isn't running out of energy. That is structural bankruptcy. The bank came to collect a debt that your legs couldn't pay. Part 2. The wall is mechanical. Z-line rupture. We have been brainwashed to believe that the wall is purely about glycogen, running out of sugar. So, you obsess over gels and carb loading. But let's be honest, if your quads are so damaged that you can't bend your knee, a gel won't save you. For the four-hour marathoner, the limiting factor is almost always eccentric muscle damage. Running is a series of controlled collisions. Every time you land, your muscles lengthen under load. Eccentric contraction to absorb three times your body weight. Do that 35,000 times. Under a microscope, something terrifying happens. The sarcomers, the tiny units of muscle contraction, begin to pop. We call this Z-aligned streaming. The structure of the muscle fiber literally tears apart. Your brain receives this data. It detects massive tissue trauma. To save you from a catastrophic rupture, like tearing your quad off the bone, the brain acts as a governor. It inhibits the electrical signal to the muscle, forces you to slow down. You aren't tired, you are broken. And no amount of zone 2 cardio can fix a broken Z-line. Only strength can prevent it. Part 3. The chemical lobotomy. The painkiller trap. Now, this leads to the most dangerous trend in modern running. Running. I see it constantly. Runners taking ibuprofen, Advil, or Voltron before the race as a precaution, or popping them at kilometer 25 when the pain starts. Let's be crystal clear about what you are doing. You are performing a chemical lobotomy on your legs. Your body produces chemicals called prostaglandins when tissues are damaged. These chemicals create pain to tell you to stop. When you take an NSAID painkiller, you block these chemicals. You smash the dashboard light while the engine is smoking. This allows you to keep running hard on damaged Z lines. The result? Catastrophic injury. You turn a two-week recovery into a stress fracture that takes six months to heal. Kidney danger. This is the scary part. During a marathon, your kidneys are under immense stress from dehydration and myoglobin muscle protein in the blood. NSAIDs constrict blood flow to the kidneys. Combining dehydration plus muscle breakdown plus painkillers is the perfect recipe for acute kidney failure. I have seen runners end up in the dialysis unit because they wanted to shave five minutes off their time. Do not matter the problem. If you need a painkiller to finish, you didn't train correctly. Part 4. The 44.5 kilometer. Reality. There is one more reason why your legs fail before the finish line. You trained for 42.195 kilometers, but on race day, you will never run 42.195 kilometers. You are training for the wrong distance. Let's do the real world math. The warm-up. You jog 1 to 2 kilometers to prime the system. That counts. 
That is mechanical load on the legs before the race even starts. The GPS drift and the weave. Unless you run the perfect blue line tangent, which only elites do, you will weave. You dodge slower runners. You go wide at water station. You zigzag around corners. Most amateurs finish a marathon with 42.8 kilometers or 43 kilometers on their watch. The bonus meters, the walk to the start corral, the walk to the car or hotel after the finish. The total cumulative load on your legs for the day is closer to 44.5 or 45 kilometers. If your training prepared your legs to survive exactly 42 kilometers, you are going to hit the wall at 39 kilometers. You have no structural buffer. You need to build legs that are over-engineered for the task. Part 5, the solution, hybrid training. So how do we fix this asymmetry between heart and legs? How do we ensure you don't need painkillers? We need to train you as a hybrid athlete. 1. Heavy eccentric strength? You cannot just run. Running breaks you down, strength training builds you up. But not just any strength, you need eccentric loading. This means slow lowering phases in your squats and deadlifts. Why? Because the marathon destroys you eccentrically? We need to immunize your muscles against this damage. Heavy weights build stiffer tendons and stronger Z-lines. 2. Time on feet, the over-distance principle. You don't need to run 45 kilometers in training, that's too risky. But you need days where the cumulative load is high. This is why we do fatigue runs. This is why we do back-to-back -back long efforts. We are teaching the chassis to hold together when the shock absorbers are worn out. 3. Train all zones. Don't just do long, slow distance. That builds the heart but bores the muscles. You need threshold work to teach the legs to handle acidity. You need marathon pace work to condition the fibers to the specific biomechanics of race day. The goal is to make 42 kilometers feel short. The invitation. Balancing the engine, cardio, and the chassis, strength, is an engineering problem. Most plans fail because they focus 90% on the engine and 10% on the chassis. If you want structured guidance to get this balance right, you can join the channel membership. Inside, I share weekly training schedules that integrate strength and running so you don't have to guess. But if you are targeting that specific 3.5 to 4.5 hour window, if you want the complete blueprint that integrates heavy strength, eccentric loading, and running into one seamless hybrid plan? My new book, Sub 4 Hours Master Plan, The Hybrid Coaching System, is finally available. It includes the strength protocols to build your chassis so you never have to look at a painkiller again. You can find the link to get your copy in the first pinned comment below. And finally, if you have hit the wall in your last three races and you don't know why, if you feel your fitness is there but your legs betray you, I invite you to get a training audit. Send me a message or an email with the word audit. I will analyze your training history. I will tell you if your problem is your heart or your legs. And I will build you a roadmap to the finish line. Build the chassis, not just the engine. Check the book link below or send me a message. Your running journey powered by science.